what's up guys welcome back to the channel i'm gonna ramble here for a moment before uh, we actually get into uh, today's video uh this week i was going to try to drop a video on the project cb but what i have going on inside uh the vehicle it's taking me twice as long to get done so bear with me on that one next week we should have a good video out on the uh, project cb uh update on robbie's vehicle with the code 43 uh the service manual has me uh we need to believe that the fuel injectors are at fault for what's going on with the car. I do not have a multimeter tester to ohm test out our fuel injectors before we just go run out and frivolously spend money that we don't need to spend for fuel injectors to make sure that that really is what the problem is. I uh, did do a, a Noid injector test on the uh, ECU to make sure that we were getting our pull signal from all four drivers and that all four were in the correct uh, firing order everything's good to go there so i just need to get a multimeter tester to ohm out the uh, fuel injectors before we uh throw another set in there and hopefully that that's going to be what his problem has been second thing i wanted to address is that just a little over two weeks ago i had completely spaced it to even mention anything but i had hit just over 50 subscribers on the channel and i wanted to say Thank you to every single one of you guys who are subscribing, everybody that's been commenting on the videos, that's been sharing my videos, and everybody that's been partaking. Even if you're not a subscriber and you're just watching my videos, even that still helps me out. And if you're not, hit that subscribe button. So as a thank you to you guys, I wanted to drop a quick video this week as a, uh, as a thank you for keeping my channel going for giving me a reason to keep working on these projects around here now for all us h series enthusiasts we all know the one thing that honda truly screwed up on in the design process of the h series motor aside from moving from a closed deck to an open deck design with the h22 a4 that was a terrible decision second terrible decision was that auto tensioner for our timing belts we all know that they're known for for failing quite often, jumping timing, bending valves, you name it. There are two different ways that we can get rid of the old faulty auto tensioner design on the H22s. Both have uh, some positives and both have some negatives. But the, uh, the first original way that we used to do it was with the complete H23 uh, timing tensioner setup, uh, getting a washer, a bolt, all the springs and and everything the second way is to uh, get a a uh, actual manual auto to manual bolt-on conversion uh, for the h22 engine okay the positive thing that uh, about the bolt-on conversion is it's really simple easy install to unbolt the old unit bolt the new unit in and make your adjustment and lock it into place downfall to those units one, depending on the manufacturer, is price. Uh, the second would be that when it, as the belt, uh, as your timing belt uh, wears, wears and stretches, you need to consistently be able to adjust the tension on the timing belt and the bolt-on units get trapped behind the timing cover. And so every time that you need to make an adjustment to your tensioner, you're going to have to pull your crank pulley and your timing cover to make your adjustments. Now with the H23 setup, the plus side to the H23 setup is it's just a factory style setup. So as you need to make adjustments uh, on your belt tension, all you have to do is simply crack the nut loose and let the springs do their job. The uh, downside to doing the H23 tensioner setup is with the size of the uh, F22 and H23 uh, tensioner rollers it makes the belt extremely difficult to get on you can get it on it works fantastic but it is a bitch so i'm going to start off first showing you guys how to make your own bolt-on conversion tensioner from our faulty auto tensioners for if you have the tools and everything to do it could cost you no more than about three or four bucks and after that I'm going to show you guys how to create the additional parts that you would need to run out to buy to fabricate yourself 
uh, the H23 roller tensioner setup in case you would like to try to do a more OEM style uh, tensioner. All right, now to get started, to make our own manual tensioner out of the automatic tensioner, we're just going to need a few basic things, which just about anybody that works on cars should have just about all these basic tools. We've got ourselves a hacksaw, 3 8 drill. I've got an assortment of different taps, drill bits to match the taps, a chisel, a small screwdriver, and then you'll have to run out and get yourself a bolt that is two and a quarter inch in length and a nut to match your bolt. So with all these key ingredients that we have here on the table, I'm now going to show you guys how to take our old auto timing belt tensioner and turn it into a manual timing belt tensioner at just the cost of a three and a half dollar bolt. So I've got my tensioners set up here in the vise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the hacksaw or a cutoff tool and I'm going to cut across this uh, metal collar cap. I'm going to do that on both sides so that way I can peel this cap off and then we'll be able to get to uh, removing the, uh, the whole spring and tensioner assembly that's up inside there. Now I've got a cut made on that side and both the other side. I should be able to take my little chisel and I should be able to just knock this right off. And then I'll be able to show you guys the inside. And now that the cap is off, right up in here, there's a tiny little C-clip. We're going to pop that C-clip out and the whole spring and assembly is going to come out of this whole entire unit. The whole tensioner has now been gutted out. Next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to get this thing cleaned up and get all the nastiness and oil and stuff from out of it and on it. We'll get it all cleaned up. Then I'm going to be removing this bolt down here at the bottom. I'm going to take an appropriate size drill bit and drill this hole open so that I have something to tap for what's going to end up being our adjuster bolt on the manual tensioner. For the hardware that I'm using, I'm going to be running a metric 10 millimeter by 1.25 threaded because that's the uh, size tap that I have. So I've got my uh, tensioner set up here in the vise. I now have my drill out here with an 1132 drill bit. I'm now going to drill this hole open to that size and then we'll tap that hole to uh, fit our metric 10 by 125 threaded bolt. So now we're going to tap the hole with my metric 10 by 125 tap. Be very gentle, be very careful, make sure you start real slow, and make sure that you have it nice and straight when you start getting your cuts. And just keep working your way till you get the whole entire hole threaded. Now, the only reason I chose the metric 10 by 125 because it's a slightly larger bolt, which will give us enough strength, and the uh, 125 pitch on the threads because that's the tap that I had with most of what our Honda bolts use but the 125 threading was a little bit difficult for me to find an all threaded bolt with the uh, flat hex head and it was there was a lot more stuff available for the metric 10 by 1.5 threading so if you want and you use a metric 10 it may be easier for you to use a metric 10 by 1.5 threading just for the ease of uh, more available options for the bolts that you can. All right now the tensioner has been completely gutted and we flipped it over we got it drilled out and now it's threaded to accept our bolt and I had no I had mentioned there's still one more uh, step that we need to do which I'm going to show you what this next step is and why because if you noticed Obviously, the tensioner originally bolts in facing this way, which leaves little to no room underneath here, fitting past the oil pump. 
and we had just drilled out and threaded the bottom side and why we did that because obviously look at how large this opening is and there's nothing that we're going to be able to use on this side so we're going to end up having to cut this down because like i just mentioned it originally bolts into the engine just like so but we're going to be flipping this thing upside down to make our new manual tensioner which is going to now drop this a lot lower and it's not going to just bolt right up Ugh. so the one last thing that i need to do is i'm going to make a mark to cut across to leave just the ear tabs from here and up and we'll be able to stick our bolt in and our tensioner will then be finished so I'm going to get this thing set up in a vise again I'm going to pull out I'm going to use my cutoff wheel because it's going to be a little bit quicker for me to get it done and probably a little easier for me to make the cut straight but you can also use the hacksaw to uh, get this piece cut up to get this thing to fit in right all right, now, now that I got it all cut up, this is what she's going to look like in the end. She's not the uh, most beautiful of things, but it's going to work. And uh, depending on what brand you uh, are looking at, this could potentially save you up to 125 bucks to create your own manual tensioner for the H22. All right, guys, there she is, bolted up into the engine. And as you can see with the bolt being roughly two and a quarter inches in length. It gives us the perfect amount to be able to drop the tensioner all the way loose. And then still has more than enough length on the bolt. to max that tensioner completely out. And you would use your nut down here to lock that bolt into the position when your belt's on there. And there you go. H22 DIY manual timing belt tensioner. All right, so this is gonna be the H23 setup which is a, actually a pretty simple setup to acquire all of the parts. I mean, actually, uh, most of what's sitting here is actually from an F-22, but uh, these two parts right here, this stud and this washer, those two pieces are an H-23 only uh, items. So initially, I'm going to show you guys how to recreate these two pieces, but if you want to do the H-23, F-22 setup initially, you can run out to any you know salvage yard and uh, get the uh, F-22 tensioner, the uh, spring for the tensioner on all the F-22s, even like other models. You'll have the uh, stud bolt for the spring and the main stud for all the timing here, the main washer and main nut for the stud that holds it all together. and. The, like I said, the H23 specific for the swing arm attachment on the tensioner. The H23 has a bolt-on, unboltable uh, swing arm or swing pin. <clears throat> Whereas on the F-Series, that's just built straight into the pump. And also this big large washer is from an H23. So I'm going to show you guys first off. Uh, this washer, there's really nothing super special about this washer. It's about an eighth inch thick. So you can run out to a hardware store and for about 40 cents, you can acquire pretty much the same exact thing. Now, as far as our bolt-on unboltable uh, swing pin for the uh, tensioner, I'm going to show you guys real quick how to just recreate this yourself out of 
a nut and a bolt. All right, so I dug around through my bolt spin and my nut spin. Got myself a little 10 millimeter nut. And I also grabbed myself a little 10 millimeter bolt, one that I made sure that had some threadings and also enough portion where there's no threadings. And what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna take this nut and I'm gonna take some red thread lock. I'm gonna put some red thread lock right here up at the end. And I'm gonna tighten this nut as tight as I can onto the end of the uh, threadings here. Okay, now I've got that on there pretty good. There's some red thread locker in there. Once that uh, sets, that thing should be on there pretty nice and strong. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take here is the actual H23 one, and we're gonna match the length, which this whole entire, the whole entire piece from end to end is one inch and from the end of the stud into the edge of the, where the nut would sit on is just about one eighth of an inch over half an inch so what we're going to do is we're going to match up side by side i'm going to make my marks i'll end up cutting off the head of the bolt to make the stud and then I will shorten up the threadings to match and make our own tensioner swing pin. All right now you guys can see a side-by-side -side comparison of the actual H23 swing uh, swing bolt versus my own made one. They look like they match up pretty well. I'm going to get all this stuff uh, gathered up and uh, show you guys bolting up all the F23 stuff with uh, with my new uh, homemade piece and a uh, aftermarket washer. So there you guys go. Two different ways that you can save yourself some money by doing your own manual tensioners for your H22s. One's not too pretty looking, but functions just fine. The other gives you more of a uh, manual factory uh, feel, but is more of a pain in the ass getting the belt on. So both have their pros, both have their cons. Pick your poison. One last time, thank you to all of my subscribers. You guys are awesome. I hope that what I just showed you helps you out. I hope it saves you guys some money, and that's going to do it. Do the whole YouTube thing, guys. You know, like, share, subscribe, comment. I'm Zach. This is Woodstocks. Until next time, peace out.